I am Sabine Amjad. I will teach you software testing. In the last lecture, we started the topic performance testing. We studied performance testing objectives, introduction to performance testing, types of performance testing, factors governing performance testing. Today, we will study methodology for performance testing and tools for performance testing. Methodology for performance testing. The steps included for performance testing are requirements collection or collecting requirements, writing test cases, automating performance test cases, executing performance test cases, analyzing performance test results, performance tuning, performance benchmarking, and then recommending right configurations for the customer. Let's start from collecting requirements. Performance testing needs elaborated in the documentation and environment setup. Documentation is usually the SRS. Environment setup means usually we have startup instructions such as the software works best with following software and hardware configurations. Usually there is a list of softwares with their versions and a list of hardware with brand names and their mod models. We should consider those requirements for conducting performance testing. Expected results may not well known in advance. Now we discuss the performance testing requirements collection challenges. Requirements should be testable. Then not all features or functionality can be performance tested. By this statement, we mean can we mean can we cannot consider all the modules of the system for performance testing specific modules with heavy load requirements need to be performance tested for example sales feature in a shopping cart based project should be performance tested a performance test can be carried out for a completely automated product usually load simulators are used for performance testing so if we can execute a business operation by using a simulator only then its performance testing would be feasible. Requirement needs to clearly state that what performance factors need to be measured and improved. Requirements need to be associated with the actual number or percentage of improvement that is desired. For example, ATM money withdrawal shall be completed within two minutes. Now we have sources for driving performance testing requirements. First one is performance compared to the previous release of the same product. For example, ATM withdrawal transaction will be faster than the previously previous release by 10%. We can say that a new HBL ATM machine should be 10% faster than the previously installed HBL ATM machines. Second is performance compared to the competitive products. For example, ATM withdrawal will be as fast as or faster than the competitive product XYZ. We can say that HBL ATM machine should be faster than UBL ATM machines. Now the third is performance compared to absolute numbers de derived from actual need. For example, ATM machine should be capable of handling 1000 transactions per day with each transaction not taking more than a minute. So we can say that the new HBL ATM machine should be capable of handling 1000 transactions per day with each transaction not taking more than a minute. Performance numbers derived from architecture and design. From system architecture and design diagrams, we can understand the data flow of the system and use case diagram helps in the understanding of the user interaction with the system. Through these diagrams, we can have an estimate of the expected load on the system. Here we have performance testing requirement types. There are two types of performance testing requirements, genetic requirements and specific requirements. 
generic requirements those requirements that are common across all products in the product domain area for example the time taken to load a page initial response when a mouse is clicked and the time taken to navigate between screens so these requirements are common among all the almost all the products specific requirements those requirements that depend on the implementation for a particular product and differ from one product to another product in a given domain for example the time taken to withdraw cash in an atm so it has specific requirements example of performance test requirements here in this table you can see the atm cash withdrawal transactions expected response time loading pattern or throughput and the machine configurations machine configurations are same except network configurations however the load pattern changes for different transactions according to the table expected response time gets double when the load patterns are double but the machine configurations are same you can see the first and the last row of this table now the second point is writing test cases test cases for performance testing should have the following details defined list of operations and business transactions to be performance tested steps for executing those operations or transactions list of product parameters and their values that are required list of operating system parameters and their values loading patterns the the load that we will exert on the system resources and their configurations expected results product version or competitive products to be compared with and related information such as their corresponding fields third step is automating performance test cases performance testing should be automated due to following characteristics performing te testing is repetitive performance test cases cannot be effective without automation because the results of performance testing need to be accurate and manual calculations can introduce inaccuracy performance testing takes into account several factors and it is difficult to remember and use them if tests are done manually the factors include throughput response time tuning competitive analysis and capacity planning all these factors we have studied in the previous part of performance testing lecture in case of manual testing it is difficult to remember the values of the all these factors for further calculations and analysis the analysis of performance results need to take into account related information that is impossible to do in case of manual testing automated performance testing is best suitable to generate different reports particularly in which comparison with different past testing results is required so in case of automating performance test cases we will have these values to be compared with the new values the fourth step is executing performance test cases performance testing involves less effort for execution of course due to the automation of test cases but more effort for planning data collection and analysis the most effort consuming aspect in execution is usually data collection data corresponding to the following points need to be collected first one is start and end time of test case execution second is log and trace or audit files of the product and operating system for future debugging and repeatability process utilization of resources on a periodic basis resources can be cpu memory disk network utilization and so on configuration of all environmental factors and the factors can environmental factors can be hardware software and other components 
the response time, throughput, latency, and so on as specified in the test case documentation. The data for all these points will be collected. Plotting of performance test results. Here you can see three graphs in this slide. I will explain each graph one by one. Graph A shows the relation between number of concurrent transactions and the time taken to execute those transactions. In graph A, as the number of concurrent transactions increase, time taken for the transaction remains constant up to some point. After that, with the increase in transaction, time taken increases rapidly. The increase in the graph is due to the limited capacity of the system to handle concurrent transactions. Graph B shows the relation between the number of users and the transactions processed per hour. In graph B, as the number of users increase, transactions processed per hour also increase. But after a certain point, a further increase in the number of users transactions processed per hour start decreasing. This decrease is also due to the limited capacity of the system. Now graph C. In graph C, the relation between throughput and resource utilization is shown. Lines of different colors represent different resources. CPU utilization has no effect on the number of transactions processed per hour. Disk read and write operation also does not affect number of transactions processed per hour. Memory utilization has a very little effect on number of transactions processed per hour. Now, network, pa network packets. By adding network packets, number of transactions processed per hour increases gradually to some extent. After, that, after this, uh, this point, it will be useless to increase the more network packets network packets. Throughput increases as the number of transactions processed per hour increases. Fifth step is analyzing the performance test results. Most complex part of performance testing, it requires product knowledge, analytical thinking and statistical background of analyst. Analysis steps include Calculate mean, calculate the mean of performance test results, calculate standard deviation, remove noise, recalculate mean, recalculate standard deviation. Now the question is what is noise? Usually there are a set of performance numbers that come from multiple runs of the same test. In a few iterations, there can be some errors committed by scripts, software, or human. When these values plotted on a chart, one or two values that are out of range may prevent meaningful analysis. Such values are called noise and can be removed. The process of removing these values is called noise removal. After that, mean and standard deviation needs to be recalculated. The data coming from cache needs to be differentiated from the data that gets processed by the product. The reason is that the data that comes from cache takes less time to load on the page as compared to the data processed by the product. Differentiating the performance data when the resources are available completely as against when some, some background activities were going on. If we are testing the project and in the background we have opened for example Corel Draw or Adobe Photoshop, the performance will be reduced as compared to if no background activity is running. Performance numbers are to be reproducible for customers to ensure that performance tests are repeated multiple times. Test results should be reproducible, otherwise it would, would be difficult to believe for the client 
that the tester has repeated the test cases and there should be minor differences in the test results. Performance test results example. If the average response time of 100 people withdrawing money from ATM is 100 seconds and the standard deviation is 2, then there is a greater chance that this performance data is repeatable than in a case where the standard deviation is 30. Such a large value of standard deviation is due to noise in the data. Standard deviation represents how much the data varies from the mean. Standard deviation close to zero means the product performance is highly repeatable. Step 6 is performance tuning. Narrow down the list of parameters that impact the performance. There are two types of parameters, product parameters and operating system parameters. For example, the product parameters can be parallel transactions and memory. Parallel transactions are the concurrent transactions supported by the product and memory is the required memory for its execution. Performance test cases are repeated for different values of those parameters. Understanding each parameter and its impact on the product is not sufficient for performance tuning. Combination of parameters to cause changes in the performance. The relationship among various parameters and their impact too is very important to performance tuning. You should understand the individual as well as the combined effect of parallel transactions and memory on the product performance to identify the performance tuning. Steps involved in getting the optimum mileage are tuning the product parameters. Product parameters may be parallel transactions. Identify which transactions or operations executed in parallel do not affect the performance of the system. Then cache and memory size what cache and memory size is required for the best performance of the product operations the third is creating background activities identify which background activities do not affect the performance of the operations of the system and which activities if run in the background adversely affect the system then providing better priority to highly used operations or transactions if multiple business operations are executed at a time, the ones frequently used operation having high priority will be executed first. Changing the sequence of a set of operations to suit the resource availability. In this way, we can adjust the memory utilization of the operations being executed by changing the business flow of the operation being executed. Setting different values to these parameters enhances the product performance. Then is tuning the operating system and parameters. Operating system parameters may be file system parameters, means number of open files permitted. File system controls how data is stored and retrieved by separating the data into pieces and giving each piece a name the information is easily isolated and identified. There is a limit set in the kernel on how many open file descriptors are allowed on the system. So we need to manage the number of open files permitted. Then is disk management parameters, simultaneous disk read or write operations, memory management, virtual memory, page size and the number of pages. A page, memory page or virtual page is a fixed length contiguous block of virtual memory described by a single entry in the page table. Then is processor management parameters enabling or disab disabling processors in the multiprocessor environment. Then network parameters setting TCP or IP timeouts. The operating system parameters need to be tuned before application or product tuning is done. Then is performance tuning guide. Results of performance tuning are published in the form of a guide called performance tuning guide for customers. 
so that they can benefit from this exercise. The guide explains in the detail the effect of each product and operating system parameter on performance. Here in these graphs, we have a comparison of expected results, performance results without tuning and tuned results. In graph A, the effect of number of CPU on throughput is shown. Normal throughput is the throughput without tuning and high throughput is the throughput after tuning. Here you should be clear that the concept of high throughput is different from the high response time. And you should remember that we want increased throughput and decreased response time to get, to get best performance. In graph A, as the number of CPU increases, the normal throughput increases very slowly and then becomes constant. Expected throughput is much higher than the normal, C not the normal throughput, but the high throughput is even higher than the expected throughput that is after tuning. In graph B, the effect of memory on response time is shown. Here, normal response time is after tuning and high response time is before tuning. Overall, the response time decreases gradually with the increase in the memory, but response time after tuning touches the expected response time. The step 7 is performance benchmarking. Performance benchmarking is about comparing the performance of product transactions with that of the competitors. No two products can have same architecture, design, functionality, and code. When you deploy a product to different clients, you need to do customization even on very smaller scale. Without this customization, the product is usually not acceptable for the clients. So, there can be very similar products in the market, but not the same. Customers can also be different. An independent test team or an independent organization does performance benchmarking. The person doing performance benchmarking needs to have expertise in all the products being compared. Steps involved in performance benchmarking. First is identify transactions, scenarios, or test configurations. Then comparing performance of different products, tuning the parameters, and at the end publishing the results. Tunable parameters for the various products may be different. Understanding those parameters and their impact on the performance is very important in doing comparison. This is one place where bias can come in. For one person, the tunable parameters or important parameters can be different from the second person. Then outcomes of performance benchmarking. There are three types of outcomes. First outcome is the positive outcome. Second outcome is the neutral outcome. And the third outcome is the negative outcome. Positive outcome where a set of transactions or scenarios outperform with respect to competition. Neutral outcome is where a set of transactions are comparable with that of competition. Negative outcome is where a set of transactions underperform compared to that of the competition and performance tuning exercise need to be performed for this set of transactions. There are two types of publications to publish performance benchmarking results. First is internal confidential publication and second is audited benchmarks. Internal confidential publications to product teams containing all the three outcomes and recommended set of actions. Whereas audited benchmarks, benchmarks conducted by independent organizations are published as audited benchmarks.
कैपेसिटी प्लानिंग इन कैपेसिटी प्लानिंग परफॉर्मेंस रिक्वायरमेंट्स एंड परफॉर्मेंस रिजल्ट्स आर टेकन एज इनपुट रिक्वायरमेंट्स एंड द कॉन्फ़िगरेशन नीडेड टू सेटिस्फाई दैट सेट ऑफ रिक्वायरमेंट्स आर ड्राइव्ड रिसोर्स रिक्वायरमेंट्स रिक्वायर्स ए क्लियर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ रिसोर्स रिक्वायरमेंट्स फॉर ट्रांजेक्शन और स्नैरियोज ट्रांजेक्शन associated with load conditions can be disk intensive cpu intensive network intensive memory intensive or a combination of above you have to identify which resource resource or resources are important for your transaction load patterns load patterns can be decided on the following basis short term load medium term load and long term load short term load is where we consider the actual customer requirements for immediate need medium term load means where we consider the requirements for the next few months and long term load is where we consider requirements for next few years it is recommended that you consider the future requirements during the capacity planning capacity planning corresponding to short medium and long term requirements are minimum required configurations typical configurations and special configurations minimum required configurations are that anything with anything less than the, this configuration the product may not work typical configuration is under that configuration the product will work fine for meeting the performance requirements of the product load pattern and can also handle a slight increase in the load pattern special configuration denotes that capacity planning we was done considering all future requirements techniques playing major role in capacity planning load balancing and high availability load balancing this ensures that multiple machines are available are used equally to service the transactions by adding more machines more load can be handled by the product high availability machine clusters are used to ensure availability in a cluster there are multiple machines with shared data so that if one machine goes down the transactions can be handled by an other machine in cluster tools for performance testing here you can see the names of some tools for functional performance testing and load testing these are the references you can uh, get details of this topic from this book and the chapter number is 7 Thank you class thank you students allah hafiz